Back on Patriot League All Access, joining us now is the head men's soccer coach at Bucknell University, Brendan Nash. Coach, appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your busy schedule today. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. It's my pleasure. Uh, coach, you've become uh, quickly become one of the uh, more decorated coaches uh, on the soccer side of things uh, and in the Patriot League, still active right now. Three league titles in the last five years, uh, entering your 13th season coaching in Lewisburg. And my first question uh, for you before we get to the Patriot League titles is, uh, you've been at Bucknell for so long, you've obviously seen quite a bit of evolution in the Patriot League, which just celebrated its 20th anniversary season last year. Uh, just g- if you could give me a, just some of your overall thoughts on how the Patriot League has evolved since you've been the head man over at Bucknell? Well, it, you know, it's really, I don't like to use big words, but it really has been amazing, uh, even with the three years prior to my 13 years. And, you know, now Coach Koski and I, we're the, the senior members in the, the Patriot League, and it really has evolved quite a bit. And, you know, when I first got here, um, the, the upgrades that we've had in facilities, the, the type of student athletes that all the schools have been able to to recruit, uh, the type of media exposure that the programs have gotten, um, the fact that, that uh, some of the teams have gone on and actually won in the NCAA tournament. Um, back when I first started, you know, the Patriot League was looked at as one of those conferences that if they won the championship they had to have a play-in game just to get to the NCAA tournament so you know I think that it shows the the level of respect um, nationally that the Patriot League has gotten in the last uh, decade decade and a half and and nowadays it's one of those things that um, the schools not only are we trying to to win a championship and advance in the NCAA tournament but quite a few of the teams are are trying to get into the top 25 and, and you know that's happened with a few of our teams in the last couple of years, but you know, I, I think we're not too far away from seeing something like men's across all recently, where there's two or three teams in, in the top 25, and you know, some of that has been the addition of awesome facilities, including ours here at Bucknell, but also the fact of how financial aid has changed and how some of the schools now have scholarships for for men's soccer. So it's involved quite a bit. Um, but that's it from the soccer standpoint. The good thing is the integrity of the, the Patriot League and the academic model. That hasn't changed at all since I've been here. Uh, 10-9-2 overall last season, so that was uh, the ninth straight year, which uh, your club with an overall record of 500 or better, uh, finishing 3-2-2 two two in the Patriot League, sneaking into the tournament as the number four seed at the uh, at the 11th hour, basically, after Lafayette had gotten a big win over Navy to jump into the number four spot, then uh, literally minutes later, with a big overtime victory over Lehigh, uh, just if you could think back to that, and, and if you could kind of take me through that, you know, did you know the result of the the Lafayette Navy match at that point? Did you know that uh, when you were going to overtime that you needed this win in order to get to the uh, number four seed, or was it just an issue of we needed we need to win and we'll just let the chips fall where they may? Well, it was a little bit of both, um, but you know, I actually committed a, a coaching taboo during that one, and I had my cell phone on during the game um, so we were actually trying to keep tabs on what was happening in the uh, Lafayette and Navy game and uh, you know the, the whole story is still fresh in our mind because of the good and the bad of it and one of the things that, that had happened is we gave up a, a penalty kick to go down one nothing in that game and you know it, it just kind of rallied our guys and you know we, we got back into the game and instead of letting the penalty kick call hurt us we actually used it as motivation to try and tie up the game and when we tied up the game um you know i checked my phone before we went into overtime and i had saw that lafayette actually had beaten navy on the road we didn't know the full story on how they had won but you know i got into the huddle and i said okay um lafayette took care of what we needed them to do now we need to take care of what we need to do and you could just see a a glimmer in the guy's eyes that said okay if this is going to happen it's not going to be something that we're not going to be aggressive we're going to be very aggressive in this overtime because we know it's if we win our season continues to go on and uh our guys really went after it and then the goal that we scored on um lehigh was doing a great job defending we actually had three chances to score on that play and the goalie made a great save the defender made a save off the line and then the rebound came out and and we were able to put it back in and it was um you know one of those that lehigh was battling and we were battling uh, unfortunately we put it in and you know we had a, a pretty good celebration 
what we found out later was that uh, the Lafayette was actually uh, a penalty kick call. So uh, we didn't really know how lucky we were, but we, as as it's gone on and we ended up winning the championship, we remind our student athletes all the time that we were actually a referee's decision in a game that we weren't even playing in away from not even making the playoffs. So, you know, it, it tells you about the competitiveness of the Patriot League and how what the difference is between first place and eighth place, you know, and just how how silly that actually seems. Of one call in one game that we weren't even playing changed the fortunes of quite a few teams, and it changed who was going to be the Patriot League champion. So, um, you know, it, it was a great day at the time, but now we look back at it and say we need to use that as motivation because we need to make sure we're not put in that same situation the following season, and I'm sure the other seven teams in the Patriot League are also using it as motivation, saying no matter what happens, we're not out of this until the last day of the regular season. So uh, we learned a lot, and I'm sure the other seven Patriot League schools learned a lot from from just what happened in those five minutes down in Annapolis and those five minutes in Bethlehem. Uh, one of the uh, more successful players, uh, obviously in, in Bucknell history of late and uh, in Patriot League history, was Connor O'Brien, and he's playing professionally over in Europe and just helped uh, his uh, team over uh, in Europe reach the uh, Danish Super League or get a promotion in the Danish Super League. Talk a little bit about uh, what it's been like following uh, O'Brien's success over in Europe. Well, uh, you know, kind of had a very decorated career here, but it, it's because he worked hard for it. And if you watch Connor's career, he was a role player his freshman year, a pretty big player for us his sophomore year, and then his junior and senior year, he was obviously the player to year in the conference and each year he got better and better and when it didn't work out for him here he you know he went overseas and i think it's a game more suited for him it's not as physical as a game it's more of a cerebral type of game and connor is the most cerebral player i've ever coached and you know i i was we were hoping he was going to going to get a chance over here because he would eventually adapt just like we watched his career blossom here i thought if somebody gave him a chance in the mls year after year he would get better and better and it didn't work out when we went over to Denmark you know it's we started to see the same type of improvement from him the first part of his season he was adapted to the Danish soccer and then the second part uh, he scored 13 goals and I think it was 15 games because he had adapted he knew what he needed to do and he helped the team get promotion and then from there some of the, the higher teams they took notice of the American as he's called over there and uh I call, you know, one of them wanted them to move up one level, but one of the, the Super League teams, they wanted them to jump two levels and see how it would work out for him. And uh, it did work out for him, and they offered him a, a pretty good contract. And, you know, I think he's at a higher level than the MLS right now over there. Uh, you know, I, I talked to him pretty much daily through some kind of electronic transmission, and uh, it, it's a tough adjustment for him. You know, he knew that was going to be the, the case, but it's a little bit faster for him. It is a little bit more physical for him. Uh, the good news is that, that he finally got his piece of paperwork done, and he actually got 25 minutes in the game this past weekend. So um, the coaches do see something, and I mean, even though he's a young 22-year-old player that isn't really adapted to Danish soccer at this point. So just like it's always happened, I think Connor's going to continue to improve, and maybe he'll end up back here in, in, in a few years. But if not, he's going to have a, a great professional soccer career. And uh, finally, a quick uh, look at your 2011 non-league schedule, and you've got some uh, you got some pretty big games every year. It seems as though you uh, you do a pretty good job of uh, I'd say aggressively scheduling uh, some teams on your non-league slate, and you have Indiana and Notre Dame, and uh, also you have Penn State coming up on uh, the I would say probably the three biggest games in your non-league slate. Talk a little bit about what it takes to get those games on the schedule, and what your philosophy is when you schedule out of conference games. Well, I, you know, I think that over the years, it's something that uh, when you try and play those teams, whether it was the Marylands or the South Carolinas or, or the Penn States, and now we're going out to to play Indiana and Notre Dame in one weekend, and, and even Mama, too, they, they've been a top 25 team the last few years. Yep, sure. Uh -huh. um, when we try and set those up, uh, this uh, again, this talks about the evolution of the Patriot League. Uh, those games, they used to be non-competitive games um, for the Patriot League, and we would go play those games, and it was more about how are we going to keep this game close, not how are we going to win this game, how are we going to, to get ourselves some notoriety. But each year, the Patriot League, all the teams have closed that gap quite a bit. 
um, when those teams want to schedule them, they want to schedule a team that, that is going to play attractive soccer. They want to schedule a team that's going to to have a, a decent RPI. So um, you know, I, I guess the word on the street is that we will play uh, an attacking type of style. We won't go there and just pack it in and say, okay, we're going to keep this as close as possible. We go to those games and we say, okay, you know what, let's give them our best shot. And if our best shot doesn't work, then, then we'll accept it. But we don't want to change how we play against those teams that that, that are that have all the resources that we don't have. So uh, the word has gotten out, and it's actually been a been a pretty good situation for us because a lot of the the haves are invite us to their places. The tough thing is those are tough games to win, and to go into a weekend playing Notre Dame and in, in Indiana, that's really tough for us to sit there and say, let's go and and go out there and try and go two and zero. But that's what we're going to try and do. Uh, the reality is we could go one and one, we could come back zero and two. But we're going to go out there and we're going to say, okay, let's represent Bucknell soccer and let's represent the Patriot League as best as we possibly can. And I think our, our scheduling philosophy, it's, uh, again, all eight schools are starting to do this. Let's get on the road. Let's try and play some of these better teams that are going to prepare us for the Patriot League tournament or for whoever the champion is. It's going to prepare them better for, for the NCAA tournament. And for a student athlete perspective, they relish those opportunities. It's, you know, for those guys, sometimes we have midweek games that our guys are flat. But when you go and you play Penn State, you go and play Indiana and Notre Dame, we know our guys aren't going to be flat. We know that they're going to say, okay, I need my A game. And, uh, you know, it motivates our guys throughout the spring and throughout the summer saying, we need to be fit on the first day of preseason because when we jump into it, we're going in our first few games, we're playing three top 25 teams. So if we're still trying to get fit at that point, we're not going to be very successful in those games. But if our guys do what they were supposed to do through the summer, we're going to show up with a, a good fitness base and we're going to stay competitive in those games and hopefully pull out a couple upsets in those tough games. And, and again, I don't, I don't think that's a, a Bucknell philosophy. I think that's a, a Patriot League philosophy. And we're trying to pick up the better RPI games. We're trying to get more notoriety because in the end, uh, it helps with recruiting. It helps with our competitiveness. And uh, it's, it's pretty much, there's not too much losing in those situations other than if you actually go and lose the game. Brendan Nash is the head men's soccer coach at Bucknell University, joining us on Patriot League All Access, coach of the two-time defending Patriot League champion Bucknell Bison. Coach, thank you very much for taking the time. We'll talk to you later on this season. Okay, thank you.